Welcome to Move Church. Thanks for joining us for this week's message. We pray this message will both move and inspire you to make a decision into an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. This relationship is where you obtain freedom and will help value your purpose and give you the power to engage your world. Now to the message. And every time I have an opportunity to come and stand before you, I pray that I'm able to give you something that's clear, that makes sense, that resonates, that can be applied to your daily walk in the world that we live in. And so I want to know if you're ready. Because I am. Let's go there. Listen, have you noticed the trend? The path that we're on as a world as we're constantly chasing ferociously and quickly achievement. As we're chasing things that we believe are going to rectify who we are as individuals. Like we're constantly looking for something to validate our existence and our worth from a worldly perspective. So we feel the need to have to chase after things that are never going to fulfill us. But at least from a worldly perspective, it seems good to obtain this. So we chase after it with all of our energy, with all of our heart, with all of our worth, just longing for these things that seem so good to us. Like our legacies, like are literally being created by the things that we leave behind. Like in what we do. Like have you been able to write a book? Like are you, have you started a business? Like how many followers do you have? Because if you've got a lot of followers, you've got to be important. Like, I mean, you must have something going on in your life because you've got so many things that are just attracted to your movement and to your actions. But I think that there's a hidden message in this that's actually hurting us. Like, I think there's something that we're missing and we're not receiving in the position to where we want all of these things. Like, in life becomes so chaotic in the mix because we're doing so much. Like we're just constantly involved in movement from left and from right, multitasking, like doing so many things. And it leaves us in a place where what? We're empty. Like is anybody in here tired? Like you can be honest, I'm not gonna sit up here and judge you. Are you tired? Like, have you just been running around what seems like endlessly? And you're just like, yo, I need some rest. Like, my body is aching. Like, I need to just sit still for a moment. Well, I've got news for you. That's a good place to be. Like, stillness. Not doing anything. Like, there's a power in that. And all throughout the Bible, what I've come to understand as God sprinkles in truth for us to hopefully unlock and uncover is that this stillness is necessary for us actually to be able to be productive. Like your lives with family and friends and work just complicate things because you constantly feel the need to be ahead of every single thing as it comes. So you schedule and overschedule yourself for things, which not allowing you to be present in any moment because you're constantly looking at the next scheduled event. So when you're in relationship or when you're in conversation, you just can't be there to really engage what may potentially be a blessing in that moment because you're looking past that situation because life is too fast and it's too furious. And so as a result, you're trying to keep up with the quota. And what is it doing? It's destroying you. It's hurting you. Like it's leaving you with nothing else to be able to give to people and to individuals and to situations because you're tired. You're just tired. And I get it. All of us are there from one day to the next because of our over-involvement in so many activities. But God is saying to us, be still. Like, be still. 
Like, look around. There's a cost to our rigorous lifestyle, to which you're here one moment and you're gone the next. Our work culture demands 40 hours a week. We add on to that with other responsibilities and tasks and things that we want to do, and we never stop to say to ourselves, yo, is this healthy? Like all these things that I'm doing, it's just really not giving me an ability to really have rest. And make no mistake that you can be busy and have good activities to be involved in, but there's a difference in knowing when you're doing too many things. Like when you're doing too much, there's things that your body will naturally alert you to to give you a warning that, hey, Dre, you're going too far. Like you're doing too many things, you need to stop and take a breather. And in that process, there's going to be an opportunity for you to recharge. And that recharging is necessary for you to be able to deal with chaos. Like for you to be able to deal with difficult moments in your life. And so I believe that in the Bible, there are so many opportunities for us to unlock this tremendous gift and ability which we don't use within our culture because we're trying to keep up with all of the responsibilities and tasks that we've given ourselves. But are you tired? Listen, we've created an intense cycle in which exhausting ourselves through a fast-paced life which promotes overstimulation and overscheduling, which has become chronic stressors that lead to behavioral, mood, and attention issues. Like we just can't focus on anything because we've just got so many tasks to do. And we keep believing and making ourselves believe that the more tasks that we can do, the better we are. I catch myself in this all the time. It used to be on my resume. Yo, you know what? I can multitask really good. Whatever you need me to do, I can do that and 10 other things. Like, and in the reality, this multitasking is chaotic because it fragments your ability to do one thing really well. And you make more mistakes when you're taking on too many things. Why? Because you're not rested. Like you're tired physically, mentally, emotionally, and more importantly, you're tired spiritually. Woo! Woo! This one will get you. Because you need to access God consistently so that you don't run empty in the race. Like if I gave you an option this morning to choose from one of the two, and I said, yo, let's run a 50-mile race. And in the first one, we're going to run consistently, never stopping. Oh, and by the way, you ain't getting no water or no breaks. But then in the second option, I said, yo, let's run a 50-mile race. But all throughout that race, I'm going to give you drinks of water. We're going to stop. We're going to take a break. We're going to do something that's going to allow you to replenish because I know that this journey is going to be long, so I need to spiritually feed you and give you rest so that you can do it and do it well. But will you stop and recognize that you're doing too much and I need for you to take rest and to be patient and to recognize in that stillness that there's an opportunity for you to be made whole. And in actuality, the productivity that you're seeking by doing every single thing is breaking you down and the productivity that you need is coming from a relationship with your God. Amen. Schedule, schedule, schedule. What's next? What's next? We can't see that we're causing our physical and our emotional and our behavioral issues and we try harder and harder to do what? To go faster to go further, to do more. Like why have we been able to believe ourselves? Why have we made ourselves believe that it's necessary for us to be considered worthy to do many things? Like why do we just believe this in our culture that we need to do everything that we possibly can, overwork ourselves to a point of exhaustion for us to have value? Like why do I need to attach my significance to whether or not I've got a lot of followers? Like, why do I need to attach my significance to whether or not I've written a book or I've started a business? Like, I've done something that's brought people to believe that, hey, I'm important. Like, I matter because I'm doing all of these different things. And right in your seat, you have probably bought the lie, just like I did, that my significance and my importance is based on being busy. Like, because I'm busy, I got to be important. Yo, I don't got time to sit with you and have lunch this week, man, because I just got X, Y, and Z to do. And as a result of that, maybe we'll get together next month or something because I'm just too busy. 
there's something in us that makes us believe that that busyness is a level of significance and importance. And I think Jesus wants to show us that's not true. Like you ain't all of that because you've got a lot of stuff going on. Like God's not worried about all of the tasks that you have. He's worried about one which will allow you to do something very well. Like, but I need you to be spiritually rested and to have peace, which comes from rest by sitting still in moments and being able to focus on me. And I will give you what you need to be able to handle all of the chaos and the hecticness of everyday life. But will you rest first? Like this movement and commotion could drive you wild. My wife used to say, yo, Andre, why do you struggle multitasking? I'm like, well, you know what, babe, if I do too many things and I can't do one thing well, and she kind of backtracked off that for a while. I was like, I got you. Like, if I do one thing really well, babe, you got to count that as a good thing because that will be done correctly. But if I'm doing many things and I can't do any of them well, then guess what? There's going to be a lot of issues. Like, and we're doing so many things, guess what? We're distracted. Like we're distracted when we're doing many things and it inhibits us to be able to do any one of those many things very well. You're checking emails. You're looking at a grocery list. You're watching the kids. You're cutting the grass. You're going to work. And I know these are responsibilities, but I want you to understand that taking your time and doing them will give you a greater satisfaction and a spiritual cleansing that you need to be able to walk with God. Like each one of us need peace every single day, and usually the peace that we want, we're actually preventing ourselves from being able to receive by just cramming our lives with all of these responsibilities. And we're wondering why we don't have time to sit and to be present when our daughter wants to have a conversation about something that's very important. Or when a tragedy happens, we ask ourselves, yo, I didn't have any idea. Like, what? That happened? I didn't know. You're right, you didn't know because you weren't taking time to rest and to be fully present as your life was unfolding. Like, when I'm not in a rush, like, I'm a better husband. Because when I'm in a rush, babe, I ain't got time for that. You're getting on my nerves. You're agitating me. I can't can't talk to you about that right now. I'm irritated because I'm rushing. Like, when I'm not in a rush, I'm a better father. As my kids come and want my attention and want to have conversation and want to show me things, if I engage them and I take time to acknowledge what they're doing, guess what? That allows me to father them better. Like they appreciate the fact that I was present and I wasn't rushing to get to the next thing, which probably isn't even as important as being present in their life right then and there. But I'm so, in, I'm so distrust. Like I'm just so thrust into moments that I think I need to be in to validate myself. Like I need to fill my schedule so I can seem important. And we all will believe this at one point in time, but I want you to understand that you are important right where you are. Like that you matter to God every single second that you have breath and there's nothing that you could ever do to gain more significance in his kingdom. Like you matter to him the day that he created you. He said, I have a plan for you and something that I want you to do, but you need to be patient in living this lifestyle. Like you don't need to run for any reason other than for exercise, but you don't need to run because there are good things that I have for you. But you've got to be patient and understand that you can only hear from me whenever you are still. Like be still and know what? That I am God. There's something powerful about that message in that scripture when it says to be still. As I said before, I think he puts things in there for us to be able to uncover. And this is one of those moments where he says just to be still. How many of us know that when you sit patiently, quietly, and still, you probably have some of your best thoughts? Like you can instantly recalibrate a scenario that may have been chaotic or hectic or confusing because you just sat for a moment in solitude and were still. There's a reason why that stillness is so effective because it's an opportunity for you to hear clearly what God is wanting to say to you. But when you're running here and you're running here and you're back on this side, you don't have an opportunity to hear from God because you're too busy trying to fulfill something that's only going to leave you empty. But we fall for it all the time. 
Listen, have you ever felt like, yo, I'm just tired. I need a break. All these things that I'm doing are driving me wild. But you continue to want to run at a speed that's 5G. Like, yo, when our cell phones don't work, man, and they're not working with the speed that we want them to, they're not just uploading documents and everything else moving as quickly as we want, we get agitated. Like I just see stuff not work for me and I instantly think that there's a problem and I got to call and complain about the service. Yo, in reality, I need to relax because there is an opportunity for something great to happen even when it doesn't seem like things are working for me. Like I'm still breathing in this moment where things aren't moving as quickly as I'd like to so I can honestly take advantage of this time and use it wisely. Like everything in my world doesn't have to be moving at the speed of 5G in order for it to be sufficient, but this is the narrative that the world has created and most of us will endow ourselves into as we try to create opportunities to show our accomplishments and to show what we've created and to show what we've done. And God's saying, you're going too fast and it's too furious. And it's going to lead to a chaotic breakdown in most situations as you deal with more stress as you deal with more emotional breakdowns because you're not still. Like when we're in relationships and somebody is dealing with something emotionally, most times when you're stressed out and you're not able to really focus, you can't see some of those signs that they present to you. Because you yourself haven't done what? Rested. Like you haven't rested. And as a result of you not resting, you just can't see things that you would have otherwise, had you been rested, be able to address. Like, I don't know about you, but when I'm tired, my brain doesn't operate right. And in most situations in this world, I will be tired if I try to keep up with everything that I'm being asked of. So this takes intentionality. Like, you've got to be intentional about resting on purpose so that you can be prepared to deal with difficult seasons because difficult seasons will be upon you consistently. Like your frantic pace and the way in which you handle problems is never going to eradicate the problems. There'll be another one tomorrow. But are you rested so that you can prepare yourself to deal with that issue as it presents itself over and over and over again? And if we had to answer that question honestly, me and most of us would say, no, we're not rested. Listen, maybe the biggest cost that we've encountered already is the harm to human relationships. Like instead of enhancing close bonds, technology has facilitated an avoidance of direct person-to-person -person contact. It takes too much time. We maintain the illusion that we're concerned more closely than ever, or that we're connected, excuse me, more closely than ever by the number of Facebook likes that we have. But it's all fast, it's right now, this instant. Everything is an impulse and our sense of connection exists only in the action, not in an accumulated, deepening experience. Woo, that's so good. Like that's so important to know that this frantic pace that we live in is really taking away from our ability to be present in these relationships and to have relationships. Like we fooled ourselves into thinking because we're communicating to everyone digitally, like there's actually a real relationship there. My dad told me a long time ago when I went off to college, he was like, son, it's going to be difficult for us to have real relationship. And I'm thinking, dad, what you talking about? Call me the cell phone, man. My dad's like, son, I won't be able to understand all the things that you're saying to me without using your words. Whew. And that became a very big deal as I was dealing with things that I had never dealt with before in college. And wanting to have a relationship and a moment to sit with my dad was something I always valued. Because of the distance, I wasn't able to have that. But there's something important about sitting in the presence of someone and having an actual dialogue. Like it just does something when I sit at the table with family and friends and people I love and we have a dinner together. And we're not in a rush to answer our phones. We're not in a rush to go complete some task. We recognize the importance of sitting right in this moment and being present and living and loving each other. Like there's something valuable about not rushing to the next situation and saying, you know what, I want to have this relationship, so let's just talk. Let me just take a deep breath. And in the same process, as you're eating and being fed physically and receiving the nourishment that your body needs to go to the next season, you're also being fed spiritually and mentally because you're getting the nourishment you need from that relationship to be able to persevere through difficult times. 
That's why when we come together on holidays, people enjoy it so much because they see people they ain't seen or talked to in a long time. So if we could, we'd probably want the luxury of spending time with people we want every single day and having dialogue. But because of our lifestyles and the places that we live and the things that we're doing, we don't have time together. My best friend and I have been best friends since we were in the sixth grade. And he got a big fancy job. I'm not mad at him. In Atlanta. He was like, Dre, how you doing? We were talking today. I'm like, yo, I'm good, bro. He said, we getting together this year? I was like, uh, I'm not sure if we are. I, I, I'd like to. I'd really love to be able to get together this year. He's like, I just wanted to let you know, we haven't seen each other for more than two days in over 12 years. It's like, bro, for real? He's like, yeah, I did the math. I'm like, wow, you had a lot of time on your hands. He's like, I did. And we need to have more time together to sit and to talk. Like, I haven't seen your kids. I haven't seen your wife. I haven't just sat with you and talked with you in a long time. And we need to have a relationship if we're going to be best friends in which we spend time together more often. Because this year, more than any other, has taught me that we won't be here forever. So what am I investing in? I spent so many years trying to create a career that's awesome and it's illustrious and it provides me with the money I need to be able to feed myself. But yo, Dre, can I just tell you it's not everything? Like I'm still lonely? Like I still long to be with my family? Like all these things that I was chasing for so many years that I thought were going to fulfill me have not fulfilled me. And what fulfills me is when I sit and talk with you and the people that I love. He said, isn't it crazy that we used to love sneakers and all these fancy cool video games and toys and all these great things, but it no longer matters to us as we become older. We understand that the only thing that gives us a nourishment is a relationship. Most importantly with our God, but then with the people he puts in our lives. But if we're too fast and we're too furious, we're going to miss an opportunity to be present in that moment and to really be able to drink from the nourishment that he has for us. So I'm asking you this morning, do you need to rest? Listen, time is needed for us to fully develop and to mature in a way in which allows us to recognize important moments of growth or to be fully present in each moment. I want to share a story with you. And I always like to go to the Bible to reference things. Luke chapter 10. Hmm. And this is a story about a lady named Martha and Mary. Pretty interesting. Check it out. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. She sat at his feet, listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, don't you see? Like I'm for sure she's like, yo, Lord, you see I'm over here working hard, right? Like are you paying attention to everything that I'm doing? Like, are you not seeing this? And Jesus simply replied, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. Like, how many of us are worried and distracted by many things? And Jesus is saying in this situation, all you need to do is come and sit at my feet. And I am going to fill you up in a way that all of these tasks that you're doing will never be able to. Like you have chosen to involve yourself and to do those things because I haven't asked you. And what your sister is showing you is what you really should be doing is sitting and taking an opportunity to take in this living water and then be fulfilled. And now you can go take care of a task or two, but you're doing task first. Like this is what a lot of us have bought into to go do task first. I think it's so important that when we wake up in the morning, the first thing we do before we check our phones is to have a moment with God. Woo. Like before your feet touch the floor, you need to be in just grateful thanks to a God has given you another day. Like to know the significance that you woke up that morning and say, let me have breath and let me praise the Lord in this situation. And I want to give him an opportunity to speak into my life before my feet touch the floor and this day gets behind me. Because as soon as your feet touch the floor, you've got one, two, three, four, five, two thousand items to take care of, and you have no time for God. And you wonder why you're struggling emotionally or internally with all the issues that you're dealing with because you didn't start from the source of life first. You didn't drink from Him. And you expected that your own energy and your effort was going to give you fulfillment. And God's like, there you go again, tripping out. It ain't going to work by your efforts. Just come and drink from me before you start this task, Dre, and I'll give you peace, and you'll be able to get through this situation. Like you'll be able to get through this situation. 
Ecclesiastics verse 2 says this, For what does a man get from all of his labor and from all of his striving and his sorrow of his heart for which he labors under the sun? For all of his days his work is painful and it's sorrowful. Even at night his mind does not what? Rest. His mind does not rest. And it goes on to say that this is vanity, meaning worthless. Like, so all of the things that you were doing throughout the day didn't give you any rest. And as a result, it did nothing for you. Because you're too busy trying to be something and to present an image to the world that says you've got it together. When in reality, you should have just been faithful to me because I would have given you what you needed to be there for those who really matter in your life. Like, come to me first and drink and then go about your day. Come to me often throughout your day and I will give you what you need to get to the next moment. I want to introduce you this morning to something that I like to call small Sabbaths. Like Sunday does not have to be the only day in which you rest. In fact, you can start your day with rest and all throughout it implement small Sabbath and take moments of one, two, three, four, five minutes, whatever you have, to be able to say, God, speak to me right now. Like I just need to close my eyes, take a small Sabbath, a deep breath, and go into a solemn place so I can just begin to focus on you. And then after this moment, I'm going to go back out into that chaotic situation and do my best to navigate. But I know I'll be effective because I've rested in you first before I went out into a ferocious world. Implement small Sabbath into your day. Listen, we fooled ourselves into believing that our busyness equates to importance. Listen, I learned this recently. I, I'm learning. I always like to say I'm learning instead of I learned. But I'm learning that sin and busyness have the exact same impact. It's kind of crazy. Like you never would have thought of this probably. Like sin and busyness have the exact same impact. What is it? Glad you asked. It cuts off an ability for you to have a relationship with people and most importantly, it cuts off an ability for you to have a relationship with God because you're too busy. Sin cuts off your ability to have a relationship with people in the right way, and it cuts off your ability to have a relationship with God because you're busy in the sin. So if your busyness throughout your day, although you may not think it's sinful, if it's not allowing you to see Jesus, if it's not allowing you to connect to him, if it's not allowing you to connect to the people around you, then what? It has the same impact as sin does. And we've got to wake up and we've got to recognize that we need rest. That we need rest. I love this verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And the only part I really want to focus on, although the entire thing is beautiful, is the first three words. It says that love is what? Say that again. Love is? Come on, say it one more time. Love is? What? Why would Paul choose patience as the first descriptor of love? I think there's something that we miss in this. Like it says that it's patience. Like he could have said a hundred other things about what love was first, but he chose patience. Like that's what love is. And I think that's important because it implicates a level of investment. Like if I'm patient in a season, guess what? I'm not rushing. Like if I'm patient in a relationship with my family, I'm not rushing. Like walking with someone signifies patience as you're in relationship and conversation with them. That's why God says in the scripture as well, to walk with me, not run. Because in a loving relationship, you need to be patient in that process in order for this to really have fulfillment in your life. But you've got to be patient. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36 says this, For you have need of patient endurance, so that when you have carried out the will of God, you may receive and enjoy to the full what is promised. Listen, my hope is that today's message activates a desire for you to build from a living place right now into a space where you're still enough to experience the blessings of God in your life. Like, I want you to understand that you don't need to be in a hurry in order to be effective or in order to be important. Like, you can just be still and you can radically 
make changes and receive blessings in your life by just being still first. Like if you can just be still and hear from me, I can give you something that you might have been looking for in all of the wrong places, but you first must sit still and be patient so that I can download what you need to be able to deal with this difficult moment within your life. Isaiah 40 says this, but those who wait for the Lord, but those who wait for the Lord, It says, we'll gain new strength and renew their power. I know we live in a microwave world, and sometimes you just want that hot pocket now. Like, I get it, man. Your stomach is grumbling. Boom! I need that thing now. We got to go to the driveway. I need that food now. I don't want to burst your bubble, but did you know that food processing used to be an all-day event? And it was like that on purpose because it was a healthier process. What do we have throughout the world? All sorts of issues that come from the food we eat. Why? Because it's quickly processed. It doesn't come from natural ingredients in every situation. Therefore, things have to be put inside of it so that we can get it. What? Quicker. (laughs) Quicker. We need it now. So i got to put things in it so you can get to it faster and you can have more of it. But food was once an all-day process. I got a real taste of that when I visited Africa. My wife and I had to be put in the area where we had to chop firewood, we had to prepare food, and yo, can I just tell you how much I appreciated going into a Walmart or Whole Foods or a grocery store and just buying something and putting it right in the grill. Like I appreciated that much more because I had to see what it was like to prepare food all day just to eat it later on. But there's something good in that process that we've just scooted past to be able to want things instantly and not have to wait. So now we have to deal with the results of rushing all throughout life. There's just missed opportunities and moments where we're not experiencing spiritual health or an emotionally rich life because we're rushing through everything. So will you take rest in this moment? Listen, the problem isn't when you have a lot to do. It's just when you have too much to do. Like Jesus was busy technically, but it was done at a speed in which he was able to communicate to himself and to have the relationships and the connections that he needed to be able to get his points across. To be able to understand the people that he was working with or talking to. There was never a moment where Jesus had to rush. And I think I love that most about him. Like there's, some, there's a confidence that comes when you don't have to rush. Because you know who you are, where you're coming from, says the Lord. And so I don't need to rush to try to impress you or to make you see something that's not there. Because I exist in this moment for a great purpose because I am not in a rush or a hurry to get you to understand that. Because I know that love is patient. Like in this season, I know that it's patient and there's no need to rush. Like anybody in here ever struggle with like angerism? That's what I like to call it. Like you just mad? You're irritated. And somebody's like, yo, what's wrong with you? Calm down. And you just get upset at the smallest thing. Man, the key's not working in the door. You know, my shoelaces, ain't co- they're not connecting the way they need to. You know, my pants ain't fitting right. The kid's making too much noise. That's a good one because that'll get you irritated. <laughs> but have you ever taken a nap after that? And then you've waking up, how do you feel? A little bit better. Because you did what? You rested. Like, it's simple application of very basic principles to our life that we forget and overcomplicate as we're on to the next thing because we're moving too fast. I want to give you seven reasons to rest, and I'm going to close. The first reason is this. Rest restores your faith and rebuilds your confidence. Woo! That is so good to know that that is true. Rest restores your faith and rebuilds your confidence. Let me read this to you. Psalms 23, 5 says this, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You've anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell forever in the house and in the presence of the Lord. Listen, right here, David provides a concept of rest in the middle of problematic situations. Like how many of us would be willing to accept an invitation where God says, yo, come here, have a seat at this table with all of the things that you are running from. 
Like with all of the issues in your life, I want you to sit at the table with them and just eat. Like calmly and patiently, just sit at the table and have a meal with the things that you're running from. Like with your enemies, how many of us would have the pause to be able to do that? I know I wouldn't. But God has that level of ability to have you sit with the things that are conflicting you and have peace in that moment. That is powerful. That deserves praise to know that the God that we serve will allow you to sit at a table and not be hurried or rushed by the things that are making you feel like you need to move faster. Like he's going to allow you to sit at the table and just rest. Like that confidence, all of us could use implementing that every single day so that we could be much more productive, so that we could be much more satisfied, so that there wouldn't be a need for us to have to run from task to task and not be fulfilled and be nothing but tired and useless at the end of the day. Point number two. Rest allows you to have better relationships where you're present and you're engaged. Listen, better relationships are the result of resting, spiritually resting, like emotionally resting, like mentally resting, physically resting. Your relationships are improved. As I talked about it earlier, I'm a better father, I'm a better, I'm a better, I'm a better husband, like I'm a better friend. I'm a better son. Like, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a better employee. I can work and do better when I have rest. Like, relationships in my life are greatly improved when I've rested. I have better clarity to be able to solve issues that I would not have been able to see or resolve had I not been rested first. So rest allows you to have better relationships. Point number three, rest provides clarity and improve vision. Anybody got up at 2 o'clock in the morning and you start stumbling around the house or wherever you live because you're tired? That's a great analogy to the truth of why you need rest because when you wake up and you're not rested, it's difficult for you to what? To see. And the same thing works when it comes to our relationship with God. We need to have clarity, and the only way to have clarity is to have proper rest, which gives us the energy to be able to see the vision that he has for us. Problem solving is more effective when your body is properly nourished with the right things, one of them being spiritual rest. You need to sit and read your word maybe for two minutes out of the day and then take what you read for two minutes and apply it for 24 hours. It's amazing what one scripture can do for you. Like one scripture implemented and repeated in your mind throughout the day as you're dealing with difficult situations might get you through that challenge that you're dealing with. Like just apply the scripture one time, Dre, to this situation. Be still and know that I'm God. Oh man, I need this now, I need this now. Be still and know that I'm God. Like there's nothing that you need right now other than a relationship with me, so wait is what he's telling you. And I will perform for you and give you what you need in a greater abundance than what you could ever theme or imagine. Rest provides productivity that is satisfying. This is good because I talked about productivity earlier. Productivity. I went to a school that was really close to Harvard, so I like to consider myself smart because it was like really close to Harvard. So I was like, I got some of that Harvard education a little bit, you know. I had some friends that went there too. So, you know, I got some of that knowledge. And there's an organization called the Khan Academy that does studies and research on children. It's phenomenal. There were two things that they indicated were the most important concepts for children in terms of development cognitively. You know what they were? Rest. Like proper rest was number one. The second thing was eating a meal at the table with their family. Like this couldn't be more directly related to our natural relationship with God. To know that there was no complicated process that we could ever be involved in other than to naturally have rest and to eat a meal with the people who are important to us. And that will be enough for us to be able to perform well in different responsibilities. Like this is so easy for us to be able to do certain things, but we have made it complicated by doing things that don't really give us anything but emptiness. 
And God's saying, all I want you to do is take care of yourself spiritually. Like in rest as often as possible so that you can be equipped to deal with the things of your life. If that study didn't show you how easy it is to manage the problems in your life, I don't know what will. But it's just so clear to know that all he wants us to do in certain situations is to be still and to rest. Listen, rest allows for us to hear from God. Woo! Yo, you got to sit still if you want to hear from him. Like you got to sit still and hear from God. Like you ever been in a place, maybe in a serene place, like maybe the woods you went camping and you just had an opportunity not to hear any noise other than the natural sound of maybe water flowing, the wind blowing, and the trees, and the birds. Like that does something for us naturally. Number one, I believe, because God created that. Like those sounds, the things that you're seeing that his hands run over, that is who he is. That is what he's created. So there's a natural peace and a, therape- a therapeutic component that comes with just viewing his creation. So you don't need to be in the middle of an epicenter in order to be productive. I used to believe that in order for me to exist in a place where people saw me, I had to be in the dead center of New York City because that's where everything was happening. But little did I know I could be in the middle of Montana and have an even greater experience with Christ and be more creative because there was nothing conflicting with my ability to be able to see things. Like when you're in God's creation, there's a space where he's able to talk to you. You can hear from him in those places because he's got an opportunity to reach your heart because there's nothing competing against what he has for you. But will you rest? Rest fights against stress as well as physical and emotional and behavioral issues. Like it's been proven that our immune system works better when what? We're rested. Like we can deal with depressive thoughts a bit better when we're rested. Like we can push back certain ailments within our body that would naturally come as a result of us being too active because we're resting. Like, so knowing when to implement rest is vital and important and key for us to really be able to live emotionally rich, physically rich, and spiritually rich. But you have got to recognize the power and the significance of stillness and rest. So we need to rest in him more specifically so that we can be filled with enough that's necessary to move forward. So will you rest? My last point, and we'll close, and this is, this is my favorite. Rest allows us to love better. Rest allows us to love better. As I said earlier, when I'm agitated or when I'm angered, it's probably because things aren't working out for me or maybe because I'm doing too many things at once. And I've just taken on too many tasks because, again, I've fallen victim to this idea that my tasks are defining who I am as a person. And all that God asks is that I steward my house well. Like before I go out into the world and try to accomplish many things, Andre, what are you doing with your wife and your children as a man that loves me every single day? The way that you love your kids has tremendous implications, Andre, on whether or not you're resting in me. Like the way that you are faithful to your wife has huge implications on whether or not you are resting in me. Like will you give me time to be able to download into you these good things so that your heart will be aligned with what is necessary to provide you with life-giving water? Like if I'm paying attention to so many things that are distracting and take away from my ability to see the value in being present for my family, then I will not have rest Because I'm taking in a worldly perspective on what it means to be productive. And God is clearly telling me that you need to be productive by first sitting with me and allowing me to work in you. And you can handle things one at a time. So rest allows you and I to love better. Listen, I said this earlier, but I got to say it again as we get ready to close. I believe the greatest thing for me about Jesus, or one of, because there's so many. He just never was in a rush. There's a particular chapter in the Bible. It comes from the book of John, and I want to read it to you. It's not going to pop up on the screens, but I want to read this to you. And every time I read it, it just gives me goosebumps 
to know that he would respond and speak so effortlessly. Because again, love is patient. And for him, there's no need for him to have to move quickly or to have to have a level of ferociousness with the way that he says his words because they are true. Because they are good. And it reads this way. The Pharisees had challenged him. Here you are appearing as your witness. Your testimony, they said, is not valid. And Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I am going. Like it just gives me goosebumps to know that a man would stand so boldly and say things to people who challenged him. And still he had no doubt on what he needed to do and what he needed to say. And it was never a rush the way the words fell off of his lips. He said these things to these men as they challenged his perspectives and his purpose. And everyone had to be laughing at him and looking at him from afar and say, he is totally wrong. And as I kind of think about this biblical story and I relate it to a modern day scenario, it would be similar to one of us being called to stand before Congress and having to testify. Like, and I don't know about you, but if I got a call from Congress, I might be worried I need to get my life in order so I can present myself well. But here he is walking up the steps of Capitol Hill with his disciples following him and thousands of people surrounding to yell and to scream. And he has no need to rush. And he stands before these men and women who have been given worldly authority and it doesn't shake him. Like he's able to tell them that I know who I am. I know where I'm going. And there's nothing that your authority and your law is going to do to me because I have a purpose that my father sent me here for. And in your life today, you can have the same peace and you can have the same movement. But you've got to recognize that it takes you being still and knowing that he is in control of every situation. And it's not by your efforts, but it's by his that you will be given the peace to be able to deal with things that are coming so fast. So will you know this morning that he loves you? Will you know that his love is patient? Because Lord knows that we all need patience in the way that we've conducted ourselves in many moments. And if someone didn't have patience for us, how can we expect to have patience for those around us? We've got to recreate these moments where we can have patient love. And there can be a stillness in our life that comes from a peace that rests in Christ. Stand to your feet this morning. I want to pray for us as we get ready to close. I don't know, maybe you've been running from something for a long time. I don't know the circumstances of your present life, and I certainly don't know the circumstances of your past life. And for that matter, I can't speak to what's in your future, but I know who can speak to what's in your future. There are things in your lives that are making you believe that you have to run faster and run harder in order to avoid them and to get away from them. When in reality, as I said earlier, God wants to prepare a table for you to sit at with those issues and easily be able to handle them one at a time without any fear in your heart. Like, I don't know about you, but I want that level of peace in my life as I deal with difficult moments. Like, to know that I can have his peace from just rest, from just rest and being able to handle all the challenges in my life. I want to pray for you this morning. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we love you. Lord, we give you all of the praise and the honor and the glory. Lord, we are your children. We desire nothing more than a relationship with you in which you're able to pour into us rest. Lord, so that we don't feel guilty about doing it, knowing that it's being done necessary so we can receive more from you. Lord, you've given us the ability to do many things, but at your speed, Lord, we desire to be able to move and to make decisions and to be present in every situation. But, Lord, we must be able to drink from your cup and we must be able to be still and know that you are God. I pray over each and every person who is here this morning who is dealing with things that are making them move too quickly. That they will come under the peace of a relationship with you, Lord, and recognize that they don't have 
to run or to be in a hurry because they've been going too fast and they've been too furious, Lord. And instead of that, you ask for them to walk with you and you will begin to unravel, unravel their hearts and to pour back into them seeds that are necessary for them to grow. Lord, all of your children said amen. Come on, let's give God a round of praise this morning. Maybe you want prayer. Come on, let's give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, maybe you need prayer. There's an opportunity for you to receive prayer today, not later, but now for things that you're dealing with. We have individuals here at our church who are committed to sitting and praying with you through difficult times. Maybe you made a decision as a result of just running for so long in your life and you're ready to now allow God to lead your life and slow you down to a space to where you can become someone who's going to live with purpose. And so we're excited about that, but the angels are rejoicing as well. And so maybe you've made that decision. We're happy about that and we want to celebrate that, but we want you to know that we want to be patient in this process of seeing God work in your hearts. Come on, let's get ready to go back into worship this morning. Let's give God more praise. <laughs> 